Hi, welcome to the Calculus One lecture series. Uh, and uh, this is the second part of the video. In the lecture number four, we will continue the, the continuity discussions here. So the, for the previous uh, video, we talked about how do we define the functions, uh, continuous, and the different type of the discontinuities. For example, jumping, the jump continuities, removable continuities, those things. So in this video, the second part of this video, we're going to take, take a look at one application about the continuities uh, functions and uh, we call this the intermediate value series here. So, okay, let's go ahead and uh, go to our lecture handout. Okay, so we're going to start out in here, talk about uh, the intermediate value series and uh, sometime, you will see people put this IVTs here. Okay, so that's what we call this the intermediate value series. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so what is the intermediate value series here? And uh, in fact, uh, you know, if you take a look at the graph, it's kind of like a very obvious and very trivial here. So, okay, so in here, all right, so let's see here. If this is a, a and this is a B here, right? So I have a function here. So my function is like a do, 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 do. Okay, like something like that, okay? And uh, so well, this is a little too long. Let's try to do it again, so it's like, a, do, 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 okay, here. Okay, so this is my functions, f of x, uh, and uh, this is my f of a, this is f of b. Oh, where's my function lines goes? Uh -huh, they disappeared on me, right? Okay, so here, okay, so, I like to have a little smoother. So this is, uh, okay. So let's try one more time. Okay, so that's good enough, All right? So this is my f of x. Okay, so what is the intermediate value theory before we put it down here? Let me just tell you here, look at the graph here, right? So we said, okay, so for this one see here, this is the f of functions, it's a continuous function on this intervals, a, b, so I put a solid dot here. So I have f of a, f of the b here, okay? So then they say here, so if you have a find, you know, if you find any number, so if you say here, this is C, this is N C here. If you find any number between the F of A, F of B, then you can always find at least one value of C here to give you this N C here. That's kind of obvious right? because this is a continuous, right? So for any value between the two N number, of course, you can find a uh, in between the intervals, right? So now let's try to write it, okay? So we say, what is the intermediate value theory? We say F is uh, continuous. And uh, AB, all right, like I drew here, AB and, okay, N is between F of A and F of B, okay? Then there is at least at least one C between A and B so that F of the C equal to S here. Okay, let's see here, they are 
So they are the several key things here, right? So 15 here is F is a continuous function on these close intervals here. And then the F of the B and F of the A. So N is has to be in between FA and FB here. So that means if FA and FB, they are, you know, the end at the same points here. Now I can, so they are the same. So then the N is not there, right? We cannot find it. We don't know, right? So the, it's not in between the F of A and B here. Okay, so now let's take a look why this one is important. So the intermediate value theory is very useful. Okay, so this is very useful to help us to find the roots. You will see some example, how do we do that? So let's first, let's get familiar with this intermediate value theory. So number seven, okay, so let's start with the, you know, so they said, okay, so this is a function f of uh, x, right? So let's say I have a function. So f a is different than f b, so that's fine. So let's say, find all the possible value of the c such that satisfy, you know, the f c equal to n. All right, so that means what here I kind of, uh, dun, 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 right? So how many c I have here? I have one, two, three, right? So I have this one, this could be our c, this could be our c, this could be our c here, right? So I have three c's here, okay? And now let's, this one is pretty obvious. This is just basically applying to intermediate value theory. Okay, let's take a look at the next one so here. They said, you know, fx equal to x squared minus x minus three has roots. Does this one have roots? Okay, so let's kind of refresh our memory. What means roots? So if C is a root for f of x, what's that mean? That means if you put the C in there, we give you zeros, right? Okay, so now in here, how do I use intermediate value theory to see there is roots or not? So the intermediate value theory, first things they say has to be continuous. So I know this one is continuous, why? Why is it continuous in this interval? Because this is a what? It's a polynomials, right? So polynomial is a continuous. Okay, so now because it's a C, so the root is means f of C equal to zero. So I will say, hey, let me put the f of ones here to see what is f of ones here. So you put ones here, this is one square minus one minus three. So what do you have here is minus three. Okay, then I put the f of the three in here. So what is in here? So this is a three to the square minus three minus three. Huh, what is here? It's a three is here. So look here, I have a negative. Also, I have a what? I have a positive. What's that mean? Right, so what's that mean? That means in here, right? So for one, two, three, so this is the one, this is the three here. That means, uh, you know, I'm starting here, one, so it's a negative three, three is a positive three here. I have to end here, right? Because the F is a continuous functions, right? So you can do like, do, 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 but finally you have to what? You have to cross, the x-axis in order to get there. So when I, when I cross the x-axis, so this is a what? This is my roots here because I'm traveling from the negative to the positive, correct? All right, so then that's why we say, yes, they do have a roots here. It's because of the, by the what? So by the intermediate value theory, because I satisfy the condition, F is continuous. 
one end is negative, one end is positive. So I know I have to travel through, right? Okay, now let's take a look at the number nine here. We said um, f of x is here, you know, it's x squared minus three x. So there is a number, it's a, it's a real number between negative one and five, okay? Such that f of t equal to the negative two. Well, let's take a look here. So the, this is a continuous because it's a polynomial. So first thing I know the f of x is a continuous, right? Okay, now I will say f of one, f of negative one. So what is negative one, see here? Negative one is negative one to the square of minus three to negative one. So what is here? Is a force, right? Then I also have an f of x equal to five. So this is a five to the square minus three times five. So what I have is here, I have a 10. So then you say, oh, then you're jumping to the conclusion. You say, hey, this is not, there's no such number f of t equal to negative two. Is that true? Well, not necessary, all right? Because in here, you know, we cannot use the intermediate value theory because I cannot say, hey, negative two is not between these two. So I say there's no such value. I cannot say that. So I know I cannot use this. So intermediate value theory, right? So cannot be applied, right? But I cannot say they don't have the values here. So I will say, I will try to solve it. So I will say x squared, minus three X equal to negative two. Do I have any numbers here? Also, let's see here. So I say X squared minus three X plus two equal to zero. Then I can factor equal to zero. I can X equal to two, X equal to one. Both of them were satisfied. And the both of them are lay inside uh, my domain, negative five. Negative one and five? Yes. So the answer here is yes. It's a but it's not apply intermediate value series. Okay, be very careful. Intermediate value series, if you know in here, if I have a negative two and a 10, then you can apply the intermediate value series. Say yes, right? But in here, you know, even they cannot apply, doesn't mean they don't have it. So you need to resolve it, right? Okay, so the, now the next one is here, said uh, is the hypothesis of the intermediate value series so satisfy and within the domain, negative two and uh, is two. All right, so we said the first thing is here, the f of x, uh, has to be continuous. Yes, the f of x is a continuous. Well, so if between the negative two and the two, I know when the x is equal to zero, trig function, sine function is a continuous function. But when the x is equal to zero, we just did, right? So we know this very similar, like, uh, You know, like the, you know, like a cosine function, the limit not exist. When the limit is not exist, then the sine pi x is not what? It's not continuous. Right, we did a couple problems here for sine functions here. So if f is a continuous on the negative two, it's no. Right, so this one is uh, the, you know, this is against, so this is the fundamental value series, not satisfied, right? The first condition, the function has to be continuous. So I said IVT not uh, satisfied. Right, because it's not a continuous here. Okay. So now the last one is here, let's take a look. So they say find the interval, which one has roots. So this one's here, I said, okay, how do I do that? 
And uh, so this is, we said, this is f of x. Uh, so this is uh, what? This is a continuous of any intervals, right? Why? Because this is a polynomial. Okay, so this is really, okay, so in order to use the IVAT, I need to find the interval. When I do the f of a is positive, then I do negative of the b has to be negative because from the positive travel to negative, it has to go through zero and that is our root. Or you do f of a is negative and then f of b has to be positive, right? So this is really is a try and the arrows here. So basically this is the continuous. So we need to find some interval such that f of a is less than zero and f of the b has to be greater than zero. Of course, you can switch around, right? So you can say, you know, you can say that it's greater than zero and then this one is less than zero. So they just need to be have the opposite signs here. And this in fact is the way that computers like the software they use, try to find the root and they kind of gradually cut the interval getting smaller and smaller and they be able to simulate the roots here. So like in here for us, we just try the arrow. So let's say the here f of zero, that's the easiest one right? so here, right? So when you have the f of zero, so what is you put a zero, 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 so it's a negative one. All right, so now we can find another value by trying the arrow, I would say, hey, Let's try to f of three, see what happens here. So f of three, you plug the three, I can get 170. Oh yes, this is greater than zero. So I have one is less than zero and we have one is greater than zero. So I know by the intermediate value theory, I can find the zero and the three. So I can guarantee f has roots at least roots, right? Has at least uh, one root. It could have more, but uh, I, you know, at least uh, one root somewhere in here, the zero to the three. So you can continue. So, you know, maybe you can divide it into the smaller interval and kind of narrow it down exactly where is the roots here, right? Okay, let's see it. So this is what we call this intermediate value series here. Like we say, this is kind of like very neat applications about the continuity. And the definition is quite simple and it's kind of intuitively makes sense, right? So that means that is f of x has to be continuous, right? And whatever, you know, that the reason why it's a continuum, that means they're going to pass in through the point. So you will have f a and f of b. So any number in between, because they have to be continuous passing that point. So you can always find the relative c to give you a number. So like we say, it's a very, very useful application to help us to identify where will be the possible roots for your function here. Okay, that's it. And now we finished uh, this section here. Okay. And uh, so looking forward to talk to you to our next topics here. Okay, have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.